What is going on everyone? DJ is here with another Advanced Wars by way of replay analysis. Today, we are bringing back the nutty lower level series. This is a user submitted game. If you wish to submit your own game, please follow the description below. You have a 500% better chance to get your game reviewed if you do do a map that I haven't reviewed though. So stop sending me caustic finale maps. Stop sending me all the maps I've reviewed. So yes, but please keep them coming. I got over, I don't know, probably a thousand submissions to this day. So if you throw them in there, it's like winning the lottery. Maybe you're the lucky winner. Ring a ding ding. Anyway, today, in the series, we have ourselves this matchup of a tier 4 Jake vs. Jess matchup. The Grudge match. Now, wh what exactly is this map right here? This is a Fog Global League map, a Boomerang Step 2. Now, when I hear this, it sounds like a dance routine. You know, you hear all the stupid dancing. Teach me how to do it. Teach me how to do the wing ding. Like, it got all these stupid names. Boomerang, step two, one, two, kangaroo. Like, you know, you know it's gonna be some dance routine or something. I, sh I should make my own dance routine. Like the monkey, like, ooh, da, ah, ooh, ooh. <laughs> I need to shut up. Anyway, this is this is the map. It's in the Global Leagues. Uh, it's a pretty standard map. You got three base in an airport. First three base in the airport, no really super strong weaker sides. Like you have this pipe seam, so this is technically the weaker side for purple, since this is cut off and you have to go through this forest over here if you want to reinforce the bottom. Likewise for orange over here. So this is technically orange's weak side, and this is technically purple's weak side. You can bust through the pipe seam, but there's really no need. Uh, you can really front shift quite easily. This is one of those very ambiguous strong side weak side. It is very, very slightly a weak side over here for purple. Very, very slightly. Uh, maps like this where you have three bases close to each other rather than a clearly fine strong and weak side really come down to front switching. How effectively do you front switch on this map? It's a lot less of how to overpower the opponent and more how to front switch, how to catch them off guard, how to leave small groups of units uh, to bait them and then on the other side of the map you pow them right in the face. Uh, maybe go through an HQ rush, maybe you go capture a calm tower, etc. So you really want to catch your opponent off guard. So this one, and there's no mountains in the middle either, so you're going to have to have a lot of recons for intelligence. Uh, so you want to kill off your opponent's recons uh, as well to ensure they don't have good intelligence where your units are. And then you can get them with the front switch, give them a good old sucker punch, and hopefully take them out or at least highly damage them. So this is one of those maps right there. You have a little lab that's cute in the middle. No one really gives a shit though. You don't get any new units from it. Uh, most of the contested properties are pretty straightforward. So this one over here, pretty much a straight line down the middle since there is not as much a strong uh, weak side uh, definition. It's basically a straight diagonal line down there. There's two column towers. Uh, they're both contested, but they're, you know, they're. this is probably gonna fall under purples uh, control and this is probably gonna fall under uh, orange's control. Uh, but, you know, sometimes you swap them around a bit. Depends where you decide to go strong. Depends where you decide to go weak. So it actually varies by, by matchup and map. Uh, but this seems to be a pretty good uh, map. I haven't played on myself, but I've seen a few good games on this map. A lot of comebacks on this map. It seems like a very comeback heavy map, which I, I, I deeply enjoy. If you have a good... If you're losing like the entire game then suddenly you have a nice strong side weak side like front switch and you catch them off guard you can actually come out on top so it's one of those redemption maps which i love so much now let's talk about the co matchup here we got jake and jess tier four now typically you see jake and adder are typically the top ucos adder is not as good in fog as he is in standard though so usually jess takes over adder's role a lot recently the meta has evolved where jess has become the number two typically in fog typically you have number one jake then you have Jess rather than Jake, then Adder. Adder just doesn't seem to be as good in Fog unless there's a lot of copters, unless there's a lot of mech presence, you can actually make him work better. The more mechs, the more copters, the less artillery, the better Adder is. Jake is just, you know, bread and butter. Can't go wrong with it. If you pick Jake, you're, you're, you're solid down the line. There's nothing wrong with it. You might not be the exact best pick on some maps, but you're absolutely not the worst. Uh, so I typically go Jake as my safe pick, but Jess here is interesting. It is a wide open map. Recons are pretty decent. There's a lot of roads. There's a lot of, uh, you know, not too much cover in the middle. You got a few cities, but sparse territory. You got plains and forests and shoals and whatnot. I typically would probably go Jake on this map just because the airport. J Jess's airport units are slightly weaker. Her infantry are slightly weaker. Her powers are really what sets her apart. She can use her normal power and it's actually good. Whereas Jake's normal power kind of sucks especially in fog because you don't even know where to put the artillery in order to get that extra range so you're pretty much going to see jess power using her power her power her power where you're seeing jake use super power super power you know it's going to be kind of that thing so jess is typically going to get the first strike off with the power because her power is better so jess will have the momentum carrying her early in the early game but typically if she doesn't really like set herself on top by that point jake will come out on top 
Uh, so she really has to set the tone early with the first power. She gets the first power basically because because of what I just explained. Anyway, we also have some players. You might recognize one of them. Favadou. Yeah, I virtued him in another nutty lower level game when he was much worse. I think he was around 900 or something at the time. Now he's back to 1250. Mr. Favadou has learned what to Favadou and what to Favadon't do. And he's gotten a lot better. Props to him. I guess he's taken what I said in stride. Really improved himself. He plays a lot of games. Now he's 1250 now. Astro Requiem, Requiem for a Dream or whatever. He's actually 1250 too. This is an exact matchup. They, when they played this game, it was 1250 versus 1250. It was like nutty. It was like the exact same rating. So they are heavily equally matched. It is basically coming down to the CO choice right here. So without further ado, let us get begin this game. It is a, a doozer. So beginning at the top, in the purpies, we got Thabadoo. In the bottom, in the orange, we got Astro Rex. So the first thing you do is you always get the base. There's a few chains on this map, um, but typically you're just going to go for the safe properties first. There's no real reason to get an APC or anything of the sort here. You could possibly uh, go for an early airport and then use a T-copter, but typically you're going to just see tanks early or recons early. Uh, early artillery by Thabadoo, I, I question its utility here since it's such a large map. I'd probably prefer to put pressure with either via maybe you build an infantry this turn and then build a tank next turn or a uh, recon next turn because there's not going to be pressure for quite a while. Uh, but he's going for the longer build, where he's going to bring this in. It's going to take a long time to get to the front, but because he built it so early on day four, it will make the front. So it's not a terrible decision, but I probably wouldn't do it myself. I pr prefer getting intel first, like a recon, uh, like like uh, Mr. Astral is doing. Let's see if Thabadoo can really exploit that artillery. Let's see if it comes into play. Now he builds the recon second. The recon will outspeed the artillery, so it does kind of make sense building it afterward because it will catch up quite easily with eight move. The artillery is only five. Granted, the recon does have tires instead of treads. So at the bottom, uh, Mister. So it looks like Astral's actually going for the double reeky freaky strat, which I, I, I can do. It's not bad, not bad idea at all. So let's see how this early artillery gamble pays off. So far, so good. Everything's moved to the front lines. Now getting infantry later. Kind of, I prefer actually maybe not even get these two early units and just go full infantry, just go to full boom. It might interrupt a few of your caps getting over here. Look at this nice little chain here and get into the front lines. I take that back. Maybe an ABC does have some utility on this map. I haven't really seen it used too much, but I think it does actually have a little bit of viability. Um, but now we're seeing, okay, this is looking a lot more standard. So we've got three recons by orange and a tank. This is very Jess-esque because Jess is going to be you know, shooting recons down the throat of her opponents as well as a tank follow-up. And once she gets two comp towers, she gets the two tanks, uh, Kango, another tank on a city. So this artillery looks like, where does it want to sit? In this over here and lock down the comp tower? Is that what the ultimate goal of it is? I'm wondering where Thavadu thought he'd put it when he first created it. I'm curious what he had in mind, because I'm not seeing a very straightforward place here. It covers down these four properties. Maybe that's what he has in mind, locking down these two properties. Overextending if it's over here, maybe in the corner over here, but it really hasn't made the line over there. So it looks like the most logical is going to be right here. That is way overextending. So it's got to be here or falling back, or maybe if it went up here, it would go there. But right now, I'm, I'm curious where that artillery is actually going to go. I'm assuming tank follow up. We got a tank over here on the weak side, the quote unquote weak side for now. The recon comes in, barely doesn't see the artillery. So the artillery will be able to squeak by in that force without being seen. Very lucky there that this art recon was built first over here rather than over here. So it was a big gamble getting that artillery to the front lines. Because imagine if Mr. Astral actually built the first recon here. He would have seen that artillery. And then everything, the cover would have been blown. And he probably would have just front shifted over here, ignored the artillery, and then crushed him. The thing about artillery is when you build an artillery, your opponent, logically, if they see it, they should front shift and go to a different front. Because their artillery is going to have to move and then shoot it can't shoot and move at the same turn it also has five movement rather than six of the tanks and the copters and even less than the recon so artilleries are a gamble man you have to really sneak up on your opponent and fog but that's why they're not quite as good unless they're like very choky maps so it looks like orange is trying to take control of this comm tower whereas purple is trying to take control of that one now the, the artillery see or the recon see each other over there the artillery actually decides to go over here where it only covers these two properties rather than going here it actually would have been able to go in the forest without being seen um, but I guess he didn't like the idea of being up there because maybe he thinks the recon is going to go there next and reveal it. Uh, so that's another possibility. And he has no tanks to really punish whatever the recon does. So very curious use of the recon right now. 
And as orange, you don't want to attack. This is overextending right here. Logically, there's going to be a tank either here or in the middle over here. Like at this point, you probably want to either like pull it back or keep it on here. I think you could actually afford to keep it on the comp tower one additional turn, but you, whatever you do, you don't want to interrupt caps at this point because you're going to get blown away. So there's no real point. Maybe fall back to the corner over here. Just put your recon on that property or just stay where you are and get the good intel. And also, there's no harm in having a recon on that lab right there. It'll survive a one-hit KO, and then when someone kills it off, you can put a tank on top of there and kill whatever's been on the shoal attacking the recon in the first place. So it could be a good bait putting it in the middle. This recon actually opts to go in this forest over here, so this could have, artillery could have gone in this forest over here, uh, but now it will be revealed unless it goes the long route over here and takes two turns, because one, two, three, four, five. Actually, no, it could do this in one turn. Shift over there. I, I like this forest better than this forest. This is kind of a wimpy little forest over there. Um, but now, looks like Astral's kind of going tank here, tank here. It's kind of even Stevens it out, kind of getting a sense for it. He hasn't really determined his strong side, weak side yet. He's kind of just getting his sensors out, see what's going on, rather than fully committing to his side at first. And it seems like the same with Thavity, to be perfectly honest. He has more units over here. He's got two tanks, but there's this one. I assume this tank over there is on recon duty. Spot a recon, kill a recon, but the rest of the other units are going to go fight on the strong side. So now... Mr. Thavi does look over here. He, he wants to get this corner intel, uh, stop that cap if possible. Probably plop the recon on there rather than waiting there. I kind of prefer to have it plop on top because uh, then if you plop on top a tank attack and you have a tank follow up or maybe even put this uh, artillery behind it over here, uh, then yeah, put an artillery here and a recon there. They're never getting that property. Although it's kind of small potatoes in the grand scheme of things. Yeah, there's entire map and focusing two units just to lock down that one single property it's probably not worth it. Early anti-air by Thabby, smart move. Day nine, perfect timing. I love it. Eight to 10 usually. Day 10, day eight to 10 is like when I like to build uh, my anti-air because that's typically when the copters come out around day 10. So you want to have a step ahead. So I'm expecting Astro will probably build a copter next turn, not this turn. Because he's got 17k, not 18k. He actually builds his own anti-air early. These guys know what they're doing. They're 1250. They're not noobs. When I say nutty lower level, I mean lower than the pros level. I don't mean like always nutty, noomy noomy level or Jay the pacemaker level. Like you know, you, there's there's some there's some gray area. Who who constitutes the lower level? Oh, at 1250, they're in like the 93rd percentile. These they're so not lower level. I'm gonna comment this on every single game you've ever wrote. Yeah, so don't do that. Anyway, so far we're gonna a little quiet. Everyone's proliferating their forces, hiding in in the forests over here. Get the first copter. You're probably gonna see the first copter from orange as well. You get the ante, then you get the copter, baby. Priorities. This isn't particularly a stronger copter map because the copter is way in the absolute corner. It takes longer to get to the front line. This is not a heavy air use map, but you could use it. So this little uh, Infy's, uh, he's in for a little treat over there. And this is a very aggressive recon. That's gonna get one shot by this afterward. Oh, actually he doesn't have the comp tower, so it will live probably, but it will be finished off by an additional infantry. Uh, so we'll see it meet, meet its maker most likely. And then, they, and then the tank will be plopped here. But it will interrupt a bit of uh, uh, Purple's uh, capping. So, ooh, oh, from the planes though, from the planes though, you feel the pain though. That's the Jake power, baby. 10% boosty poos right there. That is a dead reeky freaky. And this artillery found its way back to the good forest. Good for you finding the good forest. Uh, revealed itself pretty immediately, so this tank will probably sniff it out, but he doesn't have that many units. You could reveal with the recon here and then attack with the tank, but then you're sort of asking to be, uh, to be in, in a bit of a pickle over there, so I would not highly recommend. I would recommend front switching probably down to the south over here at this point, if I'm, if I'm orange, to be perfectly honest. I would attack all this shit over here, and I would shift all my units down this way. That's what I would do if I was orange at this point. I'm curious what he does though, and we see a late artillery, I don't like this as much. First artillery was a bit ballsy, but I can, you know, I kind of like that, it's kind of, you know, cool. Later artillery is though, it really is a big momentum killer, it takes a while to get into the front lines, it's a fog map, it's a large fog map, I don't really like that late artillery over there. On the weak side, weak side, late artillery and fog, oh, it gives me a stroke, man, it gives me a stroke. Anyway, good, 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 Astral. Yes, attack. Attack and pull back. This guy is smart. Although, I, instead of pulling back, I would have probably gone to the back, uh, to the south. Would have gone downtown. Downtown. Bring these boys down over here. Don't pull back over here. Pull to the center. That's a slight thing I would change, but I like the idea behind it. He is 
shifting all his troops over there. You don't, there's a triple tank over here to one tank. You gotta back the bluff up if you are purple in this situation. Smart heads up plays by both players so far. I'm liking what I'm seeing. 1250, baby. Solid fundamentals. No baboony stuff yet. I know it's coming. Sometimes people are like, excuse me. And, and, then, and then the monkey comes out and they're like, it's like animorphs. They just slowly turn into an animal. And it's gonna happen, trust me. The baboons always come out. You can take the baboon out of the bab. You cannot take the baboon out of the bab. Um, yeah, I don't know what I'm saying. Don't worry about me. I'll be in a mental institution by next week. But uh, anyway, attacking into this a little bit, I guess. Uh, that's a dead tank. These are dead infantry. I don't like that. It's looking really good for Astro right now. I think Thavadu is a little too aggressive. Astro's gonna get the first power. He's gonna have momentum at the bottom over there. It's looking very good for Astro at this point. Thavadu kind of blundered a bit there. Not a heavy blunder, but kind of an inaccuracy slash mistake if we're talking chess terms. So that's a dead tanky. I don't know why he didn't attack from the uh, city over there. Oh, I guess because it's kind of blocked. So it's dead regardless. Dead infantry, he's actually attacked. I would have kept that hidden because now this copter's not gonna suicide itself into it anymore. I would have kept that hidden in the forest over there and, and then the dirty work with the tanks and infantry rather. I don't like revealing like that. This Riki! Oh, I barely, oh, poor thing. I would have hid that in the forest. And, man, that Riki got, got killed by one HP infantry backfire. Ouch, that's rough. Uh, so we're seeing an interrupt over here. Uh, maybe I would have interrupted with one infantry. You're gonna sacking the, uh, the recon too though. Uh, I don't know about that. Um, and going back over here, a little feisty, you see, he seems to not really have abandoned it like I thought he did at the beginning. Like, he's gonna front switch, pull back, but he's like, pulled back, and he's back. He pulled back a little bit, now he's back at it. He, uh, he has a short-term memory, I suppose. He's got Alzheimer's. Um, so, alright then. But the income right now, I didn't really pay too much attention to the income. We've got 25k to four, uh, 24k. Pretty dead even so far. If Thavidu saved up some money months, he's gonna build a Neo tank this turn, he's gonna build a bomber this turn. I probably would recommend a Neo tank over a bomber at this point. No mega tank, this is no mega tank map. Early Neo tank's pr pretty G though, so G meaning good. Uh, so, boom. Nope, nothing, just the weakening. Uh, curious, I don't know what he's gonna do with this. Uh, he keeps bringing his orange units into the range of this artillery, so that artillery might run out of ammo. Yeah, but these ta ta tanks are attacking tanks. He's hacking into Jess, and Jess is about to get her power. And he attacks the copter in there too. This is not looking good for Thavidu. That's what you Thavid don't do. He was, he was, he was trying to be a human so hard. He was trying to be a human. He learned how to crawl. He learned how to talk. But then the the hair started showing up on his arm, and then started beating his chest in the morning time. And then suddenly he was a baboon before before he knew it. This is going to be a punishing turn, I think, for Astral. He's going to whoop Thabadoo's ass, troll. So, I don't know why he's not using the power. Um, is he waiting to use it? Okay, he's not using the power. I suppose he doesn't quite need it. This tank won't reach unless he uses the power, though, so... Hmm. Hmm. Okay, no power. He's kind of foregoing that one advantage that Jess has in the early game. I kind of wish he used the power here and... You know, the infantry would have done more damage and would have killed off this tank with this tank over there. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, it wouldn't have reached. He has to actually kill that infantry. So maybe he shouldn't have used the power in that instance, I suppose. Uh, okay. I can't, I can't judge too hard. Um, but he's saving it up. He's kind of getting rid of his advantage. He's kind of throwing this copter for nothing, though. I don't really like that as well. He's kind of just throwing away that whole little advantage he had. Attacking on all fronts at once. I don't like that. I would have pulled these to the center over here. Dared purple to use his power. He wastes his power killing like one tank and a few infantry. Then you push the big boys on the side over here. Bring all these down here. Make them waste the power. Think he's going to attack some stuff. Then you hit him right in the face at the bottom of the map. But that's not what's happening. He's sacking all his units and building a neo tank. So, nerdy lower level series. Earns his name. So here comes the block rock. And now that this is uh, block rocking it. It can hit these tanks with a one extra range. Ooh, dead ant air. Ooh, not, that didn't do very much at all. I guess no one's got a comm tower at this point, so a little weaker units. Look at that range. Bagoonga. Wow, the two HP tank. Whoa, really killing it over here. You got to put the infantry there. These two are on roads, though, but the copter can basically do whatever it wants now because there's no ant air. I, you need to build more than one ant air, man. 
people are getting it down like eight to ten turn yeah build the anti-air but they don't really know how to build a follow-up anti-air maybe you build a follow-up anti-air in turn like 12 or something maybe 13 but there's it's all the way over here honestly i would have put this over there and just bring copters because copters can fight off other copters but if you don't have copters over here you're going to rely on anti-air bring the anti-air to the side where you don't have copters because your copters can handle the other copters they're basically anti-air minis you know what i mean like so these, this is just going to shoot a bunch of shit and get away with murder. Literally. So, Thavity looking pretty decent at this point. He got his first power. That's usually not what happens in the Jake Jess matchup, but it happened this time. There goes a dead uh, copter. However, Astral, he does have a superpower, which he immediately uses the overdrive. Didn't even think, barely even thought a thought. Immediately is using the overdrive. Using that to kill off a 2 HP recon. Oh, that's a hero right there. See, with the power defense, though, it does less. Like, this would have done a 9-2 or 9-3 roll, though, but because of the extra firepower and defense used by Jake's power first, did a little less. So it kind of sucks to use the power second rather than first. So Jess kind of blew her a little advantage. Kind of blew it. Uh, so this is a little weak response by uh, Requiem right here. Just kind of wimpy. Not really. Now now overcompensating with the anti-air. Didn't have enough earlier, now just overcompensating. Sees one copter, immediately builds two anti-air. Has three on the board now. And there's only one copter sighted and two total. That's a little bit of a Mang's reaction. We're like, oh, I don't have this. I need to build more and more. No. No, just chill. Build what you need to build. Don't overcompensate. Whenever you overcompensate, bad things happen. Bad things happen when you overcompensate. He's gonna have more tanks than you if you build too many anti-air. And when you have more tanks, you're gonna have more attacks and you're gonna win. So, unless it's a heavy copter map, which this is not, then you can build your little anti-air. And he sees the, he reveals the neo tank. I like hiding my neo tank before I use it. I don't if it's unless it's attacking. This shit didn't attack at all. It's just like I'm here. No, hide that shit behind over here. Lure some tanks to attack. Then you reveal it. Neo tank shouldn't reveal itself without attacking because then it invites a bomber over there he has an extra tap he's like oh it's over there maybe i should move there rather than oh blah, 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 go over here and you don't realize it later hide your surprise tech ups hide those surprise tech ups don't just reveal them for nothing it has to kill some shit seriously wound some shit or it's hiding in the forest it's hiding behind the tanks you don't want to reveal it come on guys you don't want to reveal your hand, guys. Half the fun of Advance Wars and Fog is tricking your opponent. That's half the freaking fun. That's half of how you win is tricking your opponent. Front switching. Just like, it's so much fun, guys. Stop stop revealing your hand. You're not playing poker like, oh. you're playing poker at the casino. You're revealing your hand like, uh, is a three and a 10 good? Like, no, you don't play like that. Hold those cars close to your chest. Close to your man tits. <laughs> Anyway, I think Astral should be happy that he's not completely dead. He could have gone a lot worse. Thabadoo kind of blew it by sh revealing this Neo Tank over here. Now, like I said, he's shifting the Neo Tank over there. The Neo Tank's in a good position to defend this, actually. It doesn't defend this tank, though, but it defends that. Going double Neo Tanks. Uh, just likes going tech up, so. But it looks like Thabadoo's going to get the first comm tower unless uh, Astral sacks a bunch of units, so. Now it looks like... Thabadu is shifting a bit northward, whereas Astral is shifting southward, which is very curious. So both of them are getting in the comm towers, finally. It only took till day 16 to get the first comm towers. Now we're going to see some extra KOs, some good calcs, gagunga. Um, sacking these units over here really needs to have some intel. So the recon does spot the Neo Tank at least. So hopefully he can lure the Neo Tank to attack and attack with his own Neo Tank. Let's see if he reveals this dumb shit, or he like puts it like here. I would have put it like here. Not on the city, here. There, okay? All right, put it on the city. Not revealed by vision though. He got lucky that's not revealed by vision, but it might be revealed. I want to keep that shit hidden. I want to keep that shit locked up. I don't want my opponent to know where I'm going because he's like, oh, I'm going to kill the recon. First strike. And then you get a first strike over here, Neo Tank to Neo Tank, and it's an 8-5. And you're already doing 10,000 worth of damages right there. That's what you want to do. That's what you want to do. So I don't really... And now we're just seeing Neotank spam. I mean, he's got 27k a piece over here. It's a high income map, 27 a piece. It's going to be 28 as soon if everyone gets all the properties. So now Astro does have the comm tower advantage. He sacked these units. They're going to die. Um, but he does maintain the uh, comm tower advantage. Boongla. Shifting some of these north... And 
There you go, you're gonna get the first strike. I would have used the recon first. This is Stavidu's mistake right here. You attack with the recon first, so you get the vision. Uh, so you're gonna see a first Neo Tank strike, and then there's gonna be a Neo Tank after that. And there's a Neo Tank chain going on here for Astral. He loves his Neo Tanks, and hell, props to him. But Thavidu, dude's Neo Tank, all the way at the top. It doesn't even know what it's doing up there. It's probably lost. And now he's like, oh shit, there's a Neo Tank there. Oh shit, there's a power coming. Oh shit. But there is a there is this here. But it can be revealed. You move this tank here, revealed, this tank wraps around attack. So that it can be done. It can be done. So let's see what Astro can do about that. It can be done. What the hell on earth is this? What the hell? Maybe one, but two? And there's no mechs? Like if you're Adder or Cole, maybe that makes more sense, but I don't know how I feel about that in the early game like this. It's day 17. Maybe it's day 30 and it's really all about capping. Maybe it's HQ caps and stuff, maybe, but like... You either see it really early or really late. In the mid game, it's, it's a, a head scratcher for sure. Like, what the literal blub. So let's see what Astro can do here. Kills off that tank, so he's already not been able to reveal that entire... I mean, he... No, I don't think he will be able to, unless he kills off this and then the infantry somehow, so... The Neo Tank. Let's see what he can do. Oh wow, he's he's using the anti-air. He has no vision though, he has no recon. That's what he's really lacking right here. So he can't even get the first strike. And uh, he's revealing this. So he's allowing the first strike from Jake from a plane, but he does have his own Neo Tank as a, as a backup. He doesn't have artillery, but he has a Neo Tank. So, okay. Could have gone better for both sides. Both of them kind of made mistakes along the way, but it's working out decently. Building another anti because he realizes he just literally gave that up for what? What did that even kill, like a three HP tank? I didn't like that reveal. Like, what is it? Why does this tank go kill it or something? Like, ugh, yuck. So now Thabadoo, is he gonna punish? Is he gonna punish, is he gonna Thabadoo it? He's, he's conglomerating his units over here, globbing them together. He's got two ar artillery over there. Thavidu is really going heavy on artillery, whereas Astral's like, I'm good. I don't want any indirects. I'm kind of more on the Astral side in this. I don't really love artillery on this map. It's a large map. It's not really... There's a few forests. There's a few strategic forests, but they can be easily revealed. And then Thavidu is getting a nice hit off there from a plane. The plane pain is bringing the beat down. Jake just plugged his iPod in. He's ready to go. He's bringing the beat down. He wants that extra range to kill off that anti-air from nothing. Ooh, and if he hits that Neo's tank first from a plane, it'll hurt. However, he doesn't realize. He does. Whoa, 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 whoa. Attack the Neo tank here. This Neo tank kills. Or maybe it doesn't kill because he doesn't have a calm tower, but it does a lot of damage. I would have attacked first with the copter. Oh, he's not even attacking the Neo tank. Curious. Here it is, he's defending. He did all this damage he's defending with all these units, but I don't think that's gonna be enough to defend. I'm pretty sure that Neotank's gonna get a superpower smacked in the face. So we'll see how that goes. But he has no intel, that's the thing. Astral's doing pretty decent, but he's forgot his recons over there. He's got one recon over, two recons over here, one in the back over here that's way out of position, and he needs a recon over there. He can't see shit, he has no idea what's going on. He's got an artillery with two vision, he's got a tank with three vision, Neotanks are blind as bats. So, uh, oof, I'm definitely taking Thavidu's position at this point over uh, Requiem's, so. But he's Requiem for a dream. See if he can kill off the tank. He doesn't, he reveals the Neo tank. He sees this on the road. So you can bet your ball sack. He's going in for the attack. He's gonna use that superpower for sure. He's about to use it, I know it. He's actually sacking his anti just in order to use it. Now he's using the overdrive. That is one dead Neo tank right there. That is one dead Neo tank. Imagine if he didn't get that roll right there and the, and the recon lived. Oh, that would suck so hard. This is gonna hurt. This is gonna kill a copter. This is gonna, ooh, is this gonna be a one shot? To the Neotank? Ooh, -hoo! oh no, no, it's a two eight, two nine. Not bad though. And then boom, finish it off. And this is out of range. Damn. Damn. Ooh, that hurts. That should have been over here maybe. That should have been over here but maybe, like backing up the Neotank last turn. Why did it stay over here? I guess it hit the anti-air. But still, oofies. That overdrive. Boom, 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 boom. That hurts. That hurts. And at the end of the turn, more units. More unit value. That's what that's what I'm saying. The little, oh, I used the beat down. Like the weak Jake power versus the chatty. Just superpower. 
So now here comes the Neo Tank. It's like, I don't know what the hell's been going on, but I'm here. There's nothing to fight that. So <laughs> Orange should be back in the bluff up right at the top. There's no point. Give up the Comptar, I don't care. You need to run. You're gonna be losing a lot of unit count if you don't. And push at the bottom. So levy has gotta pull back here. He's gotta pull back. He's fighting into it. The nutty, nut, the nutter butter. I guess he got a free copper kill. Well, not free, he's gonna lose 8k to kill 9k. So I guess he, you know, killed a unit, but still like, Boonga, one shot. Whoa, whoa, that's really aggressive. He sees nothing. Yeah, this, the baboon moves are starting to come out. You need recon. You can't just willy Imagine if there's just artillery. You have no idea. There's a bomber. You have no idea. And you're just willy-nilly throwing your neotank into a forest? Like, hello. Hello. Dude. He needs more intel. You can't attack this blind. Astro is like depending on luck. He's relying way too hard on luck to survive. And it's been working out for him decently. It's, you know, it's okay. He's been a little lucky so far, but you cannot rely on luck. That's how you lose. That's how you get into a three game win streak and a 10 game lose streak. You're like, oh, I'm really good. No, you're just lucky as shit. And then it comes back and bites you in the ass. You're like, oh wait, I wasn't as good as I thought. You can't rely on luck. Astral is relying way too hard to luck. Gets a free Neo tank hit over here because he has no idea what's over there. Copter's gonna kill it off. Not kill it off, but weaken it. Bomber comes in, reveals itself. These are getting pretty close to trapped. That needs to run away. There is zero anti over here. There's one of the closest one is all the way on the other side of the map. Thabdu is punishing this overextension and blind attack. Never blind attack with 22,000 worth of units. 44,000 rather with all of those, my god. Now it's looking pretty good for Thavadu. Astro has squeaked out a slight income lead, and he's actually pretty decent on the uh, in the unit value, but it's all in Neo tanks without any intel, and he's bringing all three of them back. Three Neo tanks. He has to pull back here because he's got nothing. All these he's got four damn Neo tanks, which is pretty impressive. But at the same time, like you need more recons. I'd build like another recon or two this turn. A fighter. Okay, a fighter. A Jess fighter. I think that's still one shots a bomber with a comm tower, so it's not a big deal. Honestly, I do kind of like fighters on larger maps like this. I prefer anti-air, but they're not necessarily that bad to get to the front line in like three turns rather than like five. So one, two, three turns, you're already attacking the bomber, which is pretty good. So I don't hate it. And it builds up your unit count as well. You can build four units rather than three of that turn by building the anti-air, building the air units. But now, just like that, Thavity is pushing back on the strong side of Mr. Astral. He's whipping his Astrals. So, I'm feeling, if I'm Thavdu, I'm feeling, feeling pretty decent. You don't have the comp tower, you're behind on income, but... Eesh. Blind as a bat. Blind as a bat! At least he has, at least he has a fighter coming in. Okay, so the front shift is begun. He's bringing these little units over here, this little trio, quadruo, quad of those units over there. It's gonna help out. But yeah, just chill back here. Maybe even build an artillery on the weak side. I'm, yeah, I said it. <laughs> And like plop it somewhere over here so you can't get the comp tower, but the rest just fall back, basically. Um, so let's see what Thavity does. He's, he's probably expecting some sort of uh, air resistance. He, he, he could attack into this Neo tank to be perfectly honest. He'd get away with it, but he doesn't know it, so he wants to play it safe. So I'm assuming he wouldn't attack. If he did attack, yeah, he's bringing, he's front shifting his bomber, which is not a bad idea. Usually you want to hit and run with a bomber because the fighter's coming, anti-air coming, typically more than one anti-air. Oh, he reveals... That is a dead... It's, don't put it in the forest, my god. Yeah, don't put that damn thing in the forest again. Kind of a random positioning for this Neotank over here. I would have rather centralized it rather than putting in the corner here. What's it going to fight an infantry on there? Like, I don't like hiding this in the corner. What is what is the point here? If you want to hide it, hide it back over on a city over here. Like, put this in the city, centralize it. Make it ready to front shift. Make it ready to attack the side. You really limit your options if you put it in this corner over here. It's going to take another two turns to get it relevant again. It's not even going to probably attack next turn. Very strange decision to throw it out over there. Requiem really doesn't want to give up that comm tower. He really loves that comm tower. I think I'm, I'm willing to bet he sacrificed his entire army to keep that comm tower. He, he loves it so dearly. But there's going to be a block rock coming, and this is going to get into range. There's a cop, there's a freaking bomber over here that could hit the Neo tank. Luckily for Mr. Astral, it is in the forest. It is kind of hidden. But will it be revealed? Will the truth be revealed? Because I think we're going to see a blah rock. Ooh, I like that little boosty poo right there, revealing all this stuff. So, oh, it would hit the Neo tank. If it's on this over here, I've been hidden too. So, 
Anyway, let's see. Me, smart move, bring the recon first. Astro could take a lesson from this. Bring the recon first. If you don't have a recon, hold back. Don't go balls to the wall. You need intel before you attack. You don't blindly attack. You have no idea what's ahead of you. Don't blindly attack. Bring the recon first. Then you go kill the anti-air. Here. Yeah. Yeah, boom. Where is he? Smart front shift by Thavadu. Hmm, not a bad move. And look, one, two, three, four, five that, that were anti-air units, including the fighter. Uh, so smart move to weave this bomber in between all of them and still get some kills. I mean, it's not killing a Neo tank, but, you know, getting some good kills. Does this not reach? Ooh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Doesn't quite reach that copter. That's frustrating, but he's still getting some pretty good moves off. Yeah, attacking the infantry is kind of whatever, but... Thavadu, bringing his little T-copters over, Boombi. He's attacking on all fronts, which I, I don't quite recommend, but um, I think uh, Astro's going to recommend the bottom over here, clean him up with his units. Oof, weak little fighter over here. Can't even one-shot that. Weak, weak, weak fighter. I don't know why he didn't attack this to this. I would have attacked it. I don't like... Get the first strike on the damn thing. I know you have a weak little copter, but at least use it. It's gonna hit him for like five HP, six HP minimum, like attack into that shit. I don't like that. Falling back as he should at the top. Thavid is looking really scary at the top. And uh, Astral's like, okay, I'm gonna make my death ball. I'm gonna make my death ball. Now he needs to shift all this shit over here or vice versa, shift them all together. You're like a dung beetle. You push all your shit together. And then the dung beetle rolls its shit ball towards the enemy HQ or comm tower or what have you. And then just steamrolls them with that shit ball. That's what you need to do. I hope that put a good image in your guys' minds. You need to be the dung beetle with the shit ball. Sorry, this, this show is rated PG-13. So this isn't Garfield or Alvin and the Chipmunks. Sorry. You're going to have to hear shit balls. Anyway. Doesn't look like he's front shifting at all. He's basically hunkering down on both sides, which I don't recommend. I remember hunker down over here and then push or push. He needs to reunite both sides, but he's not. And I kind of, I don't like this position by Astral. He's got more units though and more unit value, but Thavdu seems to have more of con you know conglomeration of units in the side in the top over here. So he has a big stronger army up here. Funnily enough, he has no anti range, but he does have a copter range to defend that. It's kind of funny. He needs to be utilizing Astro's. If he Astro, I'm taking notes. I, you need to utilize your recons earlier. You need to reveal vision before you attack, not after you attack. You don't shoot and ask questions later. It's the opposite. You want to see what's going on, then you move forward. Um, but it looks like he's distinct, keeping two distinct camps. I don't like how these neo tanks are kind of sidelined. They need to be in the middle, or at least in like the semi middle, where they can shift over and do some damage. But they're kind of just in their room in timeout. I don't really quite like that. APC. So we saw a double T cop. Now we're seeing an APC. Does that signify that there's going to be a stealth coming? When I see an APC, I think stealth when it's late game like this. Late game APC, highly sus. No cap. Sissy Baka. There you go. Millennials are happy. Or no, the Gen Zers are happy. There you go. Savadu attacking with the recon. He sees everything that's a dead recon. Honestly, you probably just stay where you are at this point. Don't overcommit to that. Um, I don't know. He's, he's, he's kind of letting Astro come to him. He's kind of getting the sense of what, what's going on first. Astro is coming to him slightly. Building up his forces. But he still has two distinct camps. He's got two Neo tanks. He revealed it by putting on the city over there, which is... I don't like revealing that Neo tank. Did it even kill anything? Yeah, it cut off the anti -air. Okay, that's fine. But, um, and built another anti -air copter. So he's got mostly his death wall, but then he's got two random Neo tanks and fighter over here. I feel like he could be using elsewhere. He doesn't even have any vision. Okay, so he does have vision support, which is good. He needed vision support for these two Neo tanks, or else they're blind without it. So, oh, oh, was it for the bomber? What was the bomber's fuel? Oh, uh, it had 10 fuel. It was for the bomber. That's what the APC was for. Well, he can build a stealth now. Look at all that money. Holy shit, look at that money. He can build a stealth if he wants to. What will he buy? A shit ton of money. Builds another bomber. He's double bombing it. Double bombing it. Uh, he's, he looks like he's trying to lure Astral into an attack. And it might work. 
And both of them are kind of like, I don't know, I don't know if I want to attack into that. There you go, recon first. Sees all this shit. Still going in though. Still going in. Ooh, he's going all in. Doesn't have the super though, but Jake won't have his super either. So it's like a no man's land. Who's going to get it first? But he's a little overextending over here as Astral. He's a little overextending. He has more units. He's got more unit value. He's got more income and he's got the comm tower. He's got all that covered. But he's overextending his units and how it's not going to be able to uh, abuse this or really punish it. So it looks like if he uses his block rock or his, his beat down, he will be able to rip that cap over there. Will he use it though? Oh, he'll interpret it his own way with the recon over there. Not using any powers. Free copter kill. Not free. Nothing is free in life. But. Savadu, a little wimpy of response. I mean, he can't do too, too much. That copter's dead. Not wimpy, actually. Not a wimpy response. Pretty decent, but now this is going to be a strong turn for Orange, I think. Overdrive coming. This is going to do a lot of damage, I believe. He needs to use his... Oh, he doesn't have a recon. He can't see any of this shit. I mean, these are in force, but still you would have seen them moving and stuff. Oh, when shit hits the fan, he never has a recon. It's like the critical moments. He needs the recon. Does he even have a recon up here? He doesn't have a recon up there either. He has no recons at all. Astral, my dude, you need to learn your recon management. You have some good moves otherwise, dude, but like your recons, dude, your recons. Ooh, that's going to hurt, but there's a bomber there, so. Oh, but the bomber's going down. Punished. Boom. Oh, this is a brutal turn. Ooh, this is an astral brutal turn. He's going to kick his astrals. This is, and he finally has an, an artillery over there, which is not too bad. You can put him somewhere over here and lock that down. See, the new tank is so blind, though. It can't even do shit. That's kind of embarrassing. But this is looking pretty decent for astral. Brings in his copter. Brings in the tank, the tank, the stank, the stank, the stank. What? I don't know what I'm saying. But now, now he's like, oh, I need recons. Yeah, a little too late on that. But looking pretty dominating in terms of unit value. But Thavdu's going to have his own superpower, which he immediately pops. The block rock is coming in. Reveals with his tank first. He has this recon. I don't know. I don't know why he did that, but okay. Is he going to attack Neotank to Neotank? So he first attacks Copter, and then the Neotank afterward? Will it be enough, though? Oh, he attacks a medium tank to it. Ah, interesting. Interesting, but then... This is on a shoal, though. That is on a shoal. That is going to be punished hard. Whew! He knows there's no bad recon. Just because he's like, Ugh. He puts this bomber in fighter range. He's like, this guy's so dumb. He doesn't even have any recons in range. I'm fine. And he's right. He won't find the bomber. It's too far away. He has no idea. That's so funny. He's like gotten. He's like, I know this dude at this point. He bails no recon. He's got no intelligence. He has no intelligence as in like collecting intel. Not intelligence like, Ugh. But like, and a rocket, the disrespect, the disrespect, building a rocket is so bad. He's just messing around with him at this point. Favity is feeling confident, even though he's not really winning that much, but he's still building a rocket, which might be a little bit of a blunder. Really solid counterattack over there. Not much intel, no recon. So he doesn't see these two artillery over there. So he needs to get out of range. Although he knows one's there because one just got shot pretty hard by an artillery from the forest. So he knows there's something's up. Really wants to cap that. Combines his copters. Can't quite kill off the tank. Boom, nice hit over there. Nice find right in the middle of these two. So he won't be able to kill any of them. Out of the bomb range as well. Kills off the T-copter, RIP. Heal up that Neo tank. Boom, good first strike over there. There is nothing follow up. There's only these two weak units. So Aspel should be feeling pretty good how this turn is going so far. There's not gonna be much of a counter attack. Um, the fighter is so useless though. He needs intel. He needs he needs recons. He could do so much better with recons. Build his own T-Copter. I swear, a lot of these games just come down to intel and recons. Like, people are- recon mismanagement is one of the rising big issues from 1200 to 1400 level players in FOG. Recon mismanagement, man. It's the name of the game. It's really what it is. People have no idea where to attack, when to attack, and then they just blunder. But now this is looking scary. Look at all this. Oh! Completely forgot about that. He had these little scraps over there. But then, da 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 Boom. Barrel bombs the freaking shit out of that Neo tank over there. Barrel bombed, bitch. Can that fighter even reach? Ooh. That fighter can't even reach. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 
That bomber just got away with murder. That's Bashar al-Assad's barrel bomb bomber over there. Got away with murder. That's a massacre. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Thavity, that's a strong turn for the Thavi. But Thavi needs to be wary. Look at all these units, and he's near the HQ. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, is an HQ cap coming? This is looking really bad, but if he goes all out, Orange might be able to win. Oh, fuck. Oh, shit. Thavi, dude. Thavi! This is turning into an HQ rush. Oh, my God, this is turning into an HQ rush. But he only has this one infantry over there. Well, he does have this T-copter. Will it reach in time, though? Oh, shit. Thavi. See how Thavi, how savvy Thavi is. He's winning. He's clearly winning at this point, Thavidu is. But the HQ, though. Both of them are pressing on the HQ. This is turning into an HQ rush map. Oh, man. Both of them lacking intel. The recons are out of position. He has no idea all these forces other than the new tank that's on the city. He's actually withdrawing some of the units. I would have kept them over there just to make sure. Oh, shit. Getting some charge. Is he going to use a superpower? No, he's holding on to it. Pills in Neotank. Getting some boosties. Bring this infantry. Bring that infantry over. It's only at HP, though. Consolidating. Beatdown. Interesting. Interesting use of beatdown. What is this? Not That's not going to hit. Oh, he wants to hit the Neotank. Not worth a beatdown. Ooh, Requiem, you're so boned, dude. This kills the tank, this kills the Neotank. Oh, you're so boned, bro. You're so boned, bro. Bomber, attack it! Bomber, what are you doing? Why didn't you attack the Neo? Bomber on vacation? What the hell is this bullshit? Did Krimbus come early? Like, what the hell is that shit? And he just left the door open! Astral! Does he see it? Is he smart enough to see it? He's gotta see it. He's 1250. He's so lucky that's 8 HP and not 1 H or 10 HP. That's good game. One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Six. That's good game if that's a 10 HP. That's good game. That's good game. But it's 8 HP. He lives. Barely. But the HQ rush is on. He's not going to reach it. He's coming in. He's trying. And Astro has the power. You know why the power is important? 10% extra defense. 40% defense on an HQ, 10% extra defense, 50% defense. It's hard to bring that down. And it only needs to get what? Four? I don't even think a tank knocks it below four from eight with a power. Oh shit. He's using overdrive. The super. Thabadu is basically giving up here. He's like, I, I need to defend. I need to defend. This is come, what this comes down to. Kills off the tank. Gets a little blocker in the back. He needs to have like a full, move this Neo tank right here, next to it, maybe. He needs the big beefy units right next to the infantry. It doesn't matter. Yeah, that's fine. Bring the Neo tank right next to it. No, not the shit unit. Bring your Neo tank next to it. Dude, you need your Neo tank right next to it. Okay, so he's putting it here. It just, Will he be able to reach? Yeah, he, he should be able to reach, but will it be enough? I don't know if it does enough damage. Does a tank even bring that down to four with the super power on? And he's gonna get the comp tower. He needs that comp tower so bad. He needs that comp tower. I don't think that's gonna do enough. Comp tower! You need to use your comp tower first! Get the comp tower first! No! Get the comp tower first, Abby! What are you doing? Get the comm tower! What? Get the comm tower! Get the comm tower! No! Get the comm tower, dude! Get the comm tower! No! Get the comm! 
Jesus Christ. He's so lucky. Oh my god. If he didn't have a beatdown, he would get to four because he doesn't have the calm tower. Oh lord. He lives. And I don't think Astral's gonna have enough of a follow up. He's just gonna. They're, they're, all those who gotta retreat or die. Now Fabio has a commanding lead. He, he nearly blundered that shit with the Calm Tower, but holy shit. He's got all these units streaming in now. That is scary. Look at all these units right there. That is scary. I don't know what the hell the Rockets is doing. You better fuel up that bomber too with the APC. But he's just got so many more units. He's got 60,000 more units. And now we're starting... Oh, the T-Copter Central. Everyone loves their little T-Copters late in the game, I guess. But for some reason, Astral still has the income advantage this entire time, so if he can hold up weather this off for a long period of time, I don't know if there's a day limit, maybe it's 50 days? I don't think there is a day limit, though. So he just needs to hold on to his income advantage until he can, you know, get enough units back. But he's, he's behind right now, significantly in units and unit value. But he's really death falling. He's death falling hard. He's got like nothing. He's taken the strong side, weak side to heart. He is going all in over here. This is what you need to do. If you're behind, which he is behind, the sucker punch matters. You need to hit them hard when they least expect it. Nothing over there. They're all at the top. Smart move. Let's see what you can do, Astral. Can you do it? Can you pull off a nice comeback and survive after that failed HQ? You need your the time is coming too, because that is that is coming. You need to attack now. The good recon intel though. He sees all the units over there, so he knows. Smart use of the recon. And here it comes. Here comes the first wave. Brings them all in, the Neo tanks. It's healing and it's ready to attack. Smart move. Two and one. Brings all his copters in, brings his units in, brings his T-copter and his T-copter ready to plop that over and start capping in another turn. But Thabadoo has his own infantry in position. I don't even know if I would have capped that. I probably would have put this ready for the HQ cap, to be perfectly honest. Maybe that's just me. Um, but this seemed like an HQ. This is, time is of the essence, typically. It looks like Jess is gonna get the power, too. Oh shit, looks like Astral Requiem is back for round two. The first time failed, but he is all in this time. He is all in. And if he doesn't succeed, he's dead because Fabadoo is beating the shit out of him down there. So it's all in. This is an all in right now for Astral. Can he pull it off? He's going to get a just power. Okay. He's not using it so far. He wants to reveal. Interesting. Is he... Okay. I don't know why he's... Okay, now he's using it. Later on, I would have used it earlier, but okay. This is enough? Oof. Nice roll. Copter. Ooh, does this hit too? Oh, not quite. How's he gonna break through the front line? Ooh, medium tank, boom! Right there, he's breaking through the front line. He's getting his infantry in position. Nice first strike over here, but it will get struck by the rocket because he's gonna be using his Jake power, his super power. Pulling in the anti-air. Now the anti-air are coming in, killing all the air units off. Getting some good first strikes in there. The Neo tank is out of position. It can't really do anything, unfortunately. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now it can't really do anything. Just gotta get in position. This is an all-in gamble. He's got some infantry in position. No infantry over here for Thavdu, so it's basically tied on time with the infantry, except now he has the APC boosties right on top. Block Rock comes in. This is going to murder a lot of units. Oh, the bombers, man. The bombers have been blasting the smithereens, and uh, will this neuter the astral attack? He's taking to the face now. Boom, he kicks. The Neotank lives, but to what effect? 1 HP? Dead now. Astral. Ooh, he's getting his ass drilled. Oof. And he resigns. Whew. Two gambles by Astral over here was not enough to overcome. I think he had really good early positioning. I think he was in position to win, but he just blew it without recon intel. He had two Neo tanks running wild over here. Then he put them in the corner because he had no idea what to do with them because he had no intel. The name of the game was the intel. With intel, the bombers can find and seek out the neo tanks and blow them to smithereens. Without intel, they're gonna run into anti-air. The biggest difference of the entire match, I'm gonna hammer this home over and over, recon usage. Where you put them, when you move them, move them first before the attack, not after the attack. You wanna see what you're getting yourself into before. If that means sacking 4 H 4 8K of recons, it's better than sacking 50K of units, you know what I mean? Like, if you sack a recon, like, oh, it's gonna die. 
and then you just pull back, that's fine. It's fine to sack one unit to see what's going on. It's much dumber to put all your units to attack and then like, oh shit, I'm gonna lose this, and then you're too late and you're dead. Sack one unit, just flick that little recon over there, see what's going on. The recon usage with the name of the game. There are so many bombers, so many neotanks. I think they did a great job teching up. I like the unit choices. I think both players did unit choices well. t is a little overboard, maybe just won the entire game. I mean, it helped out with the HQ caps later in the game, but they weren't really that much of a, a presence otherwise. I mean, you don't need to build two, one's enough. The bombers did a pretty good job. I'm not a huge bomber fan, but they actually put in some pretty good work for Thabadoo on this map and helped him build up his unit count. Uh, so I can't really knock him for that. The rockets was kind of dumb, but he hey, he made it work, I guess, because he had no intel. He probably didn't even know. I don't even know if he saw the rocket the entirety of the game. I don't know if Astro saw the rocket. Um, so got away with murder on that unit choice. But other than that, I thought they did pretty well on that. But the recon usage, the artillery placement at the beginning was a little dubious. He kind of just built it, and I don't think he had a plan for it. When you build a unit, you want to have a plan where it goes, what it's going to accomplish. And I think he was just kind of winging it. He was improvising, like, uh, could go there, uh, or maybe there. And he kind of like, oh, here, oh, oh, there, oh, here. And then he ended up over here when he could have just originally gone there in the first place. And he didn't have a tank to back it up either. It was a kind of a dubious ordering of stuff over there. Uh, I don't mind the build as much as where the units were going. I thought it could have been optimized slightly more. And late game artillery aren't that great. Late game indirects aren't that great. Uh, they didn't really do too much work other than this rocket, which I, I still don't like the buy. I'm not going to get over that. But typically, if you're going to use indirects, I buy them early in the game. No later than like turn like 10, maybe. Like by that point, it's going to be coming like bashing heads together. You know what I mean? Uh, and you don't want to lose some of that tempo from that. But I thought both players played pretty decently overall. Just Th Thavidu had better intel, didn't throw his units into the void like those two Neotanks earlier. They literally had no support. Those Neotanks literally like, were stronger than all the forces, right? Like, like at least winning over here. Like, all, all these units, the bomber doesn't see that. Now these are blind. Like, uh, where do we go? Uh, I don't know. And then it went over in the corner. What is this doing over here? Imagine this is over here attacking. I mean, there's a bomber, you need more anti-air. He also misplayed the anti-air. Anti-air misplacement was bad for both players, but especially Astro Requiem. Um, didn't really like that as well. You need to have your anti in the proper position at the proper time, which is very easier said than done. Of course, I recognize that. But at the same time, yeah, they let the Neotanks get murdered, barrel bomb blasted by those bombers. And then there was no counterattack. There was no anti-air to kill them off. The fighter got off one, shit, uh, one hit off on the copters, but that was about it, so... Yeah, Intel, man. Anyway, hope you guys learned something. Hope you guys enjoyed. And I will see you guys next time. Peace.